Hello YouTube, XCT here. This video is about Ofiyuki, a 30-point machine on Hack the Box that involves a YAML parser vulnerability and a custom program we can execute with sudo, which loads a WebAssembly file and executes a shell script without using the absolute path. So from the initial port scan, we can see that there's Apache Tomcat running on port 8080. So let's go to that website. And here we find this online YAML parser. There isn't really much on the site um, except this input field. And if we click pass, it's uh, saying us that there are some security reasons and um, this feature is on hold and this will soon be fixed. So this should lead us to um, Googling for YAML parser vulnerabilities. And eventually you will find this post here. It's basically, um, I think, one of the first hits on Google and describes the vulnerability in the snake YAML parser. And this is exactly um, what we have on this box. Um, even the POC looks similar here, right? And basically we have to send this um, um, POC snippet here in YAML format, which will call out to our box and load a jar from there. And if we scroll down a bit more, there's also this repository linked here. Um, and if we go there, uh, we can see it's the same POC, and it also has code to generate this jar file, uh, which we need for our payload, right? So let's copy that. Let's clone the repository. And then let's actually see um, how the payload is generated. Um, it's creating this class here. And basically, uh, we can see it right away that it's calling runtime, get runtime exec which will just execute shell commands. And of course we have to replace these um, with our payload. So let's use wget to get a shell. I'm going to download it to temp here and then just execute it. And to generate this file, what I always use is this rash.now.sh website. Um, I just made a Python version out of it uh, so I can have it locally. It's the same thing you saw on the, the last videos as well. Um, of course, we have to start a listener, um, but also we have to compile it. Um, it says in the description on the GitHub repository how to do it. Just going to copy the commands here. Then we have this payload jar here. I'm going to copy it in the correct directory. And now um, we should be good. I'm just going to execute that POC. The same as in the description, just with my IP and this payload.jar. Let's see what happens. And we get a shell. So we can see we are this um, Tomcat user. And if we look at the home directory, we can see there's also an admin user. Um, let's confirm that. Uh, yeah, basically just this Tomcat and admin user, which are custom on this box. So let's see if we can find a way to um, become this admin user. Here in opt, we have the Tomcat directory. And a good thing you can always do is just grab for password. Let's see if there's a password here. And in this line, in tomcat-users.xml, we can see that there's actually a custom password. The secret one here is default, but this one here is not. get a PTY and then use SU to become admin, copy that password. And we can see that it worked. And we can read the user flag. So now for root, if we check um, sudo dash l, we can see that we can execute um, go um, run with the specific file here. Let's see if we can, if we can read that one. And indeed we can. Um, the main function is loading this main.wasm uh, file from the local directory. So that's a relative path that's good for us. And it's instantiating um, this thing and basically looking for an exported method called info. And then it's running this info method. And um, the method is returning um, a result. Um, it's taking that as a string value and comparing it to one. And if it's not one, um, the script will say it's not ready to deploy and um, just exit. And if it's one, it will basically say ready to deploy and execute this deploy.sh script from the local directory. 
So what we have to do is we have to create this main.wasm file, make sure it returns one, and then we can create a custom deploy.sh file, which will execute something useful for us. So one way to create such a wasm file is um, to use C. So let's create a C file here. Just call it main.c and all we put in there is this info method, nothing else. So in order to compile this, you can use this em scripting tool or um, however it's uh, pronounced, which allows you to compile C or C++ to WebAssembly. That's exactly what we need here. And there is a Docker image of that one. So we don't have to install anything, which is good. Let's run this Docker command, which is basically um, more or less from documentation. Um, there are just a few things uh, we have to take care of. Um, first of all, we have to specify this exported function, which is info, and it has to be um, it has to start with an underscore here. And also we have to add this uh, dash dash no entry flag. So let's do that. And you can see it generated a few files. There's an HTML file, a JavaScript file, and the wasm file, which is the one we need. Um, so on the box, let's go to the temp directory and let's get this wasm file. Remember that when we execute this um, program, we can execute with sudo. It will um, take the wasm file and the deploy file from the local directory. So that's why we went to temp and store it here, because we'll just take the from the temp directory. Let's get um, the X file I used earlier to get a shell and just call it deploy.sh here. Um, make it executable. And now we should be good to go. We have this main.wasm file. We have this X file. Oh, sorry, the X file is from before. And we have this uh, deploy.sh file. Um, these are both used by the program, which we can execute with sudo, right? So let's execute it. And of course, we have to start a listener. So let's execute it again. And here we go. We've become root. Let's go to root directory and read the root flag. So that's basically it. Um, thanks for watching and see you next week.